I'll teach. <laughs> I'm crying, you know? <laughs> Single and ready to mingle? Well, hey, if so, you are in luck. We've got a social psychologist here today. She runs the Dating Decoder, a virtual relationship coaching service. Yeah, we want to welcome Dr. Sarah Hensley. Thanks for coming in. Thank you for having it's gonna me. It's going to be a, a unique thing. All right, yeah. first off, what made you just kind of jump into this, start yeah. your business? Yeah, so in graduate school, I was really interested in how chronic illness influenced relationships and relational stress. And I kind of spiraled from there, just getting interested in relationships in general and studying the science of relationships. And I had my own relationship troubles. I had a failed marriage and I had some difficult relationships. I had some traumatic things happen to me and I found myself in a really low place, not knowing how to be successful in love. And I ended up doing a lot of really deep work on myself, my own attachment. Um, and I became a secure and healthy individual that was really capable of finding love. And I found it. And it's been <laughs> wonderful. And so, you know, I didn't have anyone to teach me the tools that I needed. I had to kind of find those yeah. on my own. And so it just occurred to me, you know, that other people could really use this information. And that really is what drove me just to really help people find love. Absolutely. We're built for love. For sure. Um, I want you to explain too, I mean, you have a degree in a lot of this, so yeah. it's not like you're just kind of putting yeah. forth yeah, your opinions. Absolutely. You've yeah. got a good background in this. Yeah, I have a PhD in social psychology, yeah. which is the study of the science of how people relate to one another. Right. And so within that science, obviously relationships is a big component of that. Oh, yeah. And so I spent a long time studying the science of attachment and the science of attraction. And so I had a lot of knowledge. For many years, I didn't really know how to apply it. Sure. But when I figured that out, all the pieces came together. Which oh. brings us to this question. Yeah, so <laughs> I hear this term, attachment theory. Yeah. What's that yeah. all about? Yeah, so attachment theory is actually kind of an old theory. It was started by John Bowlby in 1958 and has been refined over the decades in the scientific research. And basically, attachment theory, you know, its main principles have not changed over the course of these decades. And it suggests mm -hmm. that the early interactions that we had with our caregivers when we were children create imprints within us about what it means to be in a relationship with someone else. Ah. And then we hold on to those. Those kind of get ingrained in the subconscious and they get projected out into our adult relationships. So what happened to us as children really does show up in adulthood. And a lot of people don't make that connection, but once they do and they can see, oh, how you know did my family relationships sort of influence how I receive communication or how I feel like conflict should be handled, then they can kind of put the pieces together of like, oh, I can change these strategies if I want to. They don't have to be the strategies I always use if they're not successful. That is fascinating. Yeah, isn't it? Uh, so this might be a tough question, I mean, but what is your most helpful piece of relationship that you would share or give? It's definitely to investigate your own inner attachment okay. to see, you know, do I have insecurities that may be negatively influencing my relationship? You know, how am I easily triggered in my relationship? Mm -hmm. And how do I receive communication? How do I handle conflict? Are these the healthiest ways to be behaving in my relationship? Yeah. But really what's behind those behaviors, right? And when we do that work and we can get to the inner core of sort of who we are and what we've believed about ourselves all mm -hmm. along, then we can show up as a better partner. Are women or men more likely to put in the work to do this? I'm just curious, what have you seen? You know, actually, it's really about 50-50. I've been wow. very, you okay. know, I kind of came into this um, business thinking men need a little more help, uh -huh. but that was my biased lens. <laughs> Don't right? look at me. That is you. really my I'll, biased I'll lens. It, yeah. And what I have found as with my male clients is there's some really wonderful, self-aware, emotionally healthy men out there sure. looking for love. And I think as a society, we've we've sort of had this bias that men are the ones that kind of mess things up. It's always men, right? right? It's always yeah, men. Yeah. But it's really it's really not true. We all have attachment insecurities that we deal with and and men and women are both vulnerable to those negative imprints that they picked up in childhood. Good to point and, out. And yeah. this may be a little bit outside the box, but I would think in a situation like this, social media is a blessing and a curse because mm -hmm. it's given you the opportunity to reach people, grow your business, sure, yeah. but Absolutely. at the same time, there's just a lot of stuff floating Bombarded out there. Bombarded by Absolutely. things. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and dating culture has really changed. Oh, yeah. Social media and online dating have become more popular. And so in order to be successful in that changing dating culture, we need different strategies. People aren't meeting each other organically now. They're meeting yeah. each other over the internet. and you know, there's a lot of exposure to social comparison, comparing other people's relationships, comparing yourself to others on the internet. That can be detrimental to relationships sometimes. As we wrap things up, you know, why do you think you've been so successful in this? Well, I think I've been successful, one, because 
you know, I have a lot of knowledge. I did study this for a very long yeah. time. So that gives me an edge. But I think the fact that I was once in a lot of trouble emotionally. I wasn't an emotionally healthy partner and I desired to have healthy love. And so when I see clients and they're in the trenches of, I've had this failed relationship mm -hmm. or I've had this divorce and it's really painful and I'm trying to look at myself and say, what was my role in that? And to take accountability, yeah. I, can, I can meet them at that level and say, I know what that feels like, I've been there. But there is healing available, there's help available to get these tools and these strategies in place so that you can have a fulfilling romantic relationship. It, yeah, it's, like I said, it's, it's really great. fascinating because when you dive into it and, and think of it in those terms, oh, it's, uh, you know. All right, real quick, for folks who want to follow you, I know you have events and things coming up. What's the best way to do that? You can see me at my website, thedatingdecoder.com. I'm on TikTok. Um, that's probably my biggest following, um, The Dating Decoder. I have um, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube as well. Dr. Hensley, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. Pick your brain all day long on this. Fascinating, yep. Really, thank you. appreciate it. All right, headlines are coming up next.